All right. Well, today's show is brought to you in part by Coinbase, America's largest cryptocurrency trading platform. Folks, if you've been watching the news, if you've been reading the newspaper, if you're following me on Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, you've probably seen me talking about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and how it's changing the future. Wealth is being created at an astronomical rate. I've worked out a special arrangement with Coinbase where you can earn $10 in free Bitcoin just by texting coins, that's C-O-I-N-S, to 5 Five five eight eight eight. Again, it's coins to five 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 eight 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 and earn ten dollars worth of free Bitcoin, folks. Wealth is being created again at an astronomical rate. People are getting rich almost overnight by getting involved with cryptocurrency. Don't be left out. Earn your ten dollars in free Bitcoin by texting coins. That's C O I N S to five 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 eight eight eight. Hey, by the way, when you do it, we'll also get ten dollars in free Bitcoin. Again, text coins. That's C O I N S to five 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 eight eight eight. All right. Well, my name is Michael Alden. Uh, we are here in Blue Bay Studios, and uh, yet again, I. I am super, super excited for my next guest. My next guest, her name is Samantha Radaki. I'm just going to go right out there and say her name. If you look at it, it's kind of a tough name, like my, my real name, Shuko, kind of a tough name to spell. But again, her name is Samantha Radaki. She is um, recently a Forbes 30 Under 30 in, uh, recipient. She is the uh, CMO and co-founder of a company called Chronicled. We're going to talk a little bit about her company. And, you know, h- how I found her was is she's also been ranked as one of the top thought leaders in the world um, as it relates to blockchain technology. Now, for those of you that have been following me on Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff, I've been talking, obviously, a lot about cryptocurrency uh, and a little bit about the blockchain. But Samantha um, is is an expert in the blockchain, and that's really kind of what supports this, this whole cryptocurrency craze. And so we're going to talk to her about all sorts of things and uh and it's going to be a lot of fun so um by the way if you're watching now on facebook or if you're um or if you're following us on on whatever snapchat twitter instagram make sure you share this with your friends uh relatives and neighbors because the information that's going to be provided here today is really going to help people get a kind of a firmer understanding of what's going on in this world of disruption that we live in samantha thanks so much for being my guest yes thank you for having me so uh Again, super excited uh, that, that you decided to, to join us. And so you've been featured in, you know, Huffington Post, Forbes, Inc., Business News Daily, Bloomberg Radio, doing all, doing all these uh, great things. Tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of how you got to where you're at today. And I'm going to talk to you, too. Just that, I mean, I love, you know, that I read one article about you, about when you, what you were doing when you were a kid and your dad, and you kind of like born with this entrepreneurial spirit. Um, tell us how you got to where you're at today. Yeah, so I don't think I'll go too far back in my history i could start with like i was born but um yeah, let's start i do want to start yeah, there because i read an article that said that you yeah. were coding before you could read no i yeah i i don't know if that's necessarily accurate but i did grow up around um you know an entrepreneurial spirit my family had a family-run business in the retail sector um that they grew to be quite large and so i kind of grew up around um you know the office and warehouses and they were you know, beta testing early IBM inventory systems. And I just kind of like had this um, odd obsession or fascination with uh, not necessarily technology, but just, you know, seeing the infrastructure of how, um, you know, the packages or shipments moved around from the logistics side and then starting to think about inventory. So, yeah, I've always had kind of this technology thread, but really didn't um, do anything with it. So I, I also on the other side was uh, deeply into, um, you know, studying English and critical theory and linguistics and all of that. So I, I did that, um, in college as an undergraduate and focused more on critical theory and anthropology and theater. Um, but also started at my first tech company as a junior in college with a group of friends and didn't really anticipate it to um, go anywhere. It was like a a summer sort of project, but I brought together a group of um, engineers and filmmakers and we all lived in this loft and I filmed the whole thing thinking I'd make a documentary about it. Um, So I was more at the time more interested in making the documentary about the startup than actually creating a company out of it. But um, because of just a mix of you know, maybe timing or, or the products that we built, which was a online personal shopper. So like a, a recommendation system for clothing. Um, I started thinking like, well, how do we 
enable people to like buy this stuff instead of just affiliate links and got into the the space of um, again inventory and integrating all the systems of um, all of these apparel brands so it it started then where I I realized I was the founder of like a a B2B sort of enterprise um, inventory business and did that for a few years um, had some success with it moved on and consulted for a little while um, co-founded a second company which was in a similar space but more so um, you know aggregating product data and metadata on the internet uh, and in doing some price comparison and, and deal offering around that and then ultimately started to get into the crypto space so um, I, I don't know what it was I was just having this um, more of like an academic pursuit so I did my master's degree in more of like the theoretical study of uh, emerging technologies. So anything from watching or studying like the, the game um, gaming industry or, or the history of media and how is we've moved into the, you know, early internet and then beyond and cryptocurrencies. And I started dabbling um, in, you know, buying and selling Bitcoin or, you know, investigating like, the dark web a little bit not until I realized I was like I shouldn't play around here Um, (laughs) and and, and just kind of you know it it was this emerging interest in the technology and then I I met my co-founders for Chronicled around that time and um, you know talked about this idea uh, of utilizing the underlying technology this thing at the time which is very you know no one really knew the word blockchain but using a blockchain this technology that underpinned Um, Bitcoin to represent not just financial assets or cryptocurrencies, but represent non-financial assets. So how do we put um, a house or a car or a bottle of authentic wine or whiskey on a blockchain to to verify um, its both digital and physical identity and then be able to do things like transfer of ownership. So imagine a world where you don't need to go to the DMV uh, or fill out all this paperwork to to transfer ownership or the deed of title for your car or home. So that, that to me is, <laughs> I was just talking to a friend of mine uh, who's in the real estate world. Uh, you know, I, I was trying to explain to him, <laughs> you know, what blockchain uh, is. And so, all right. So let, can, I'm, I'm glad, uh, glad we're at uh, up until this point now. So um, gr- gr- by the way, real quick, what, what was the uh, retail chain? The, re- you- the, Oh, it was like a chain called the North American Marketing Corporation, NAMCO. So it was, um, again, a small family business. They grew it to uh, probably like 200 stores. Um, and it was it was cool to grow up seeing that. And then it got bought out, right? By... My by, parents' company? Yeah. Yeah. Who did it get buy, bought out by? Um, I think it was private equity. Oh, was it? It, it moved okay. into... To, I don't know. They brought in, it was like in the, the days of when there was still, um, you know, Circuit City or Radio Shacks or, or things. Not that it was an electronics company, but um, I think they're, it was the same group. Okay. All right. So let, let's, let, um, all right. So, so blockchain, what, if you could just, uh, like we were talking a little bit earlier, um, if you could talk to me like I'm a two-year-old and explain to me, you know, what is blockchain technology? I mean, I know you could probably go on forever, but just like like a, you know, just like a Reader's Digest version of re- what it really is. Yeah. So, I mean, the underlying technology or what essentially blockchain is, is very powerful and immutable accounting software. Um, so if you think of, um, I guess the best analogy that I've, I've heard for how it's described is imagine you have a, um, you know, a shared Google document and everything that you add to it. Um, cannot be changed or altered or deleted and once you add it to that document um, it's updated everywhere simultaneously in a decentralized and distributed manner so you know you have um, let's say a transaction or an event or you record something on this blockchain Um, all of the there's you know consensus around that transaction so it's updated everywhere and then you, you know, you can only add more. Um, so like append records, but not delete or change or, or alter them. Um, that makes sense. I, I mean, yeah. I, th- I think I get that. <laughs> and so, so, um, so what, all right. So within that, you know, when I was talking to my friend about, 
you know, in the real estate world, and it's kind of like what you said. And, and to me, you know, I feel like I kind of understand this a little bit. It's like, all right, yeah, imagine being able, like you said, to buy a house, a car, whatever. And when we're talking about, you know, when I posted this on, on Facebook, we're talking about disruption, right? And how and this is, to me, again, I think it's the, the, the most disruptive technology, you know, really kind of since the Internet. But um, so so what is Even it? more so. Right? Yes. All right, so imagine the Internet being created if you had the Internet to share the information. Like So blockchain is it's almost like Internet 3.0 or 2.0 where we, we can do things. Like because of the Internet, we can talk right now and people can hear and learn about it. So it's even more disruptive um, in terms of the innovations that are going on around it just because of the exchange of information. All right, so so within the blockchain, there's this thing that I that I hear about, and I think it's kind of related to what we're talking about buying and selling things. Um, uh, the, uh, a, what what's a smart contract? Yeah, a smart contract is um, a layer. It's part of more of the Ethereum blockchain. So there's you know Bitcoin, Ethereum, then a bunch of other blockchains. But a smart contract is a um, programmable bit of logic um, that's built on on top of a blockchain. And once you, say, package this bit of logic, so for an, exa- an example of that might be um, I, if the package arrives um, and it stays within these temperature parameters, then it's good to go. So release payment to the party, like something very simple. Like So if you, you meet some bit of criteria, um, then something else happens. And you put that logic um, in a smart contract that smart contract then because a blockchain is immutable um, meaning it can't be changed or altered or deleted you can't tamper with or change like the logic within this contract Um, and it's it's a super powerful concept because it it allows it's like paving the future for trusted automation so of course software now you can have a database and you can automate things and and operate basically on autopilot Um, but if you can't trust two things like the the contract itself the logic that is executing it um, you know and it could be changed or something or two you can't trust the data that's coming in then the result could be bad or even catastrophic Um, is you know so a smart contract is like a, a trusted a packaged bit of logic that executes on top of the blockchain. All right, I think I think I get that. It, uh, it, make, it makes uh, makes a lot of sense uh, to me. Um, so so now your your company that you co-founded is a company called Chronicled. And by the way, uh, we've been on we're, with Samantha Radakia. Um, she's a Forbes under uh, 30 under 30, a recent recipient. She's the co-founder of a company called Chronicled. She's been featured in Huffington Post, Forbes, Inc., Business News Daily, Bloomberg. And uh, in fact, Huffington Post recently said that she's one of the top thought leaders in the world as it relates to this blockchain technology uh, that we're all talking about. So if you'd like some more inth- uh, information about Samantha and her company, you can uh, just go to her website. It's Samantha Radakia, and it's, it's, it's spelled, by the way, R A D O C C H. IA.com. You can just Google uh, her as well. And her company is Chronicled. Um, you can also find them at Chronicled Inc., right? Or uh, ChronicledInc.com. Yes, right? Is that your website? It's chronicled.com. Oh, Chronicled.com. All right. It's easy. That's even better. Uh, yeah, but you're we on got tw- that good domain. <laughs> That's a great domain. So, you, But your, your Twitter, I think, is uh, at Chronicled Inc. Uh, as well. Yeah. So she's out there. She's doing some great things. So, what, um, again, we're on with her talking a lot about the stuff that I think we're all trying to learn about this disruptive world. Um, so <clears throat> now – the blockchain, what I thought was really interesting about you, so I, my, my business, I do a bunch of different things, but one of the things that, that we really um, focus on is we sell you know, health and wellness products and dietary supplements. And when, and when, we, when we receive product um, you know, from a reputable manufacturer, which, pretty, which is the, oh, the only one we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we have to make sure they're reputable, right? <laughs> um, yeah. but, but from there, it's is like, okay, well, great, you're reputable, and, you, and you, maybe you're audited by the FDA, and you, you fall under these, the standards of what we call good manufacturing, good manufacturing practices, and, they, and, and all the bottles have lot numbers. But the interesting thing that, that you talk about you know, with this blockchain is, 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 is really for making a better world, and you talk about how – you know, this blockchain can literally trace like bottles of drugs, you know, f- truly, truly from like, you know, manufacturing point all the way to the to the actual recipient. Tell us about that, because to me and in, in how that can apply to anything. I mean, to me, that's just awesome. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's a, a massive problem. So, you know, going on the point of healthcare and, and products and dietary supplements are less regulated. So that is a, a whole area where, you know, blockchain could really help because there's a lot of wiggle room for some of these chemicals or, or you know, manufacturing processes that are, are not really audited as much as, say, like the pharmaceutical industry. Um, Chronicles uh, had the most success in our first vertical, which is the pharmaceutical industry. So we are working using a blockchain to um, first give a, a unique identity that cannot be changed or altered to the drug on um, yeah, it could be the pill bottle or case level. So, you know, registering that information on a blockchain and then as it passes um, through the supply chain and moving from party to party, all of those event transactions are, are registered. So to, to like complicate it a little bit more, once you have a unique identity, like you can trust that this pill um, or pill bottle or lot of pills is... Um, you know, in fact, what is being represented, then you can add a, a bunch of um, additional information about it. So, you know, maybe it, it stayed, again, there's a regulation in the pharmaceutical industry that drugs need to be kept within a certain temperature range. Um, and a lot of that data, I mean, there are sensors that track that data, but, you know, the it can be tampered with or forged, and you don't know if, like, the drug that you're getting is, one, the drug you expect, it could be counterfeit, or two, you know, it's it's been kept um, to the high quality that that you need it to be, or in a certain temperature range. So once we have that identity, um, then you can link other sort of uh, things about it, and and track that as well through the supply chain on a blockchain. Uh, and now, so as it relates to like the world of cryptocurrency, you know, I, I, myself, I think maybe like a lot of people might have watched that documentary on Netflix, uh, banking on bi- <laughs> uh, banking on Bitcoin, and. Um, I, you know, so as I'm, as I'm listening, and by the way, I think it's also wild that you're in this business because of how you grew up and seeing the supply chain and seeing how your parents are shipping stuff. And now you're kind of in this, you know, n- newer version of really kind of w- w- what you grew up with. I think it's just awesome. But um, so, so like in the banking world, I had no idea that this is a, a, a challenge with, with, within the banking world where a transaction happens and they can somehow what double up or delete or just just vanish is, is is that why blockchain is also so interesting to the banking world yeah from what i've understood that is one of the the value propositions and i think the the other kind of core um benefit of a blockchain is its ability to build um ecosystems and get what you know are considered in a traditional sense competitors operating together on a, a similar network um, so, you know, in the banking industry to, to move, um, you know, all of these massive giants and competitors on the same network, um, also has like the side effect of leading to the development of new standards or protocols, uh, that both increase efficiency, but also, um, you know, trust between trustless parties. Right. So it, it, the, let me ask you this too, uh, uh, about the... All right. So, if I wanted to create my own blockchain, is that is that possible, or or is that I'm just trying to because again I'm not really a tech guy, but it, is that is that how it works? Like we could just or a, a company because I'm thinking of what Chronicle does, <laughs> right? And I'm thinking I'm saying I, I don't know maybe maybe you maybe it's right on your website. I didn't look at every page, but. Um, can I do that, or can companies do that? Because I think again of when you think of the supply chain, and from you know, when, back to the dietary supplements. I know I'm just r- rambling on a little bit, but when I, you know, when we do receive product, you know, there are you know certificates of analysis, and there are assays that are done, and there are certain levels of protection. But I think it, you know to, to be able to have my own quote blockchain within whatever we're doing, it would be kind of cool. Is that is that happening, or is that it, or is, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so the, there are two. I wouldn't even say competing views, but, you know, the an original mission is to have kind of these open um, networks, but with data privacy. So having larger networks um, where, you know, multiple parties are sharing. Where we're seeing the industry go um, is that, you know, it is becoming a little bit more fragmented where there are either industry specific blockchains or a city wide blockchain or even a blockchain formed around a specific use case. So, um, you know, it could be just yourself and your 
um, vendors and suppliers and materials companies like participating on, um, you know, a shared network to transfer whatever data you need. So you're not, you know, like emailing back and forth these certificates or something like that. So that's something, you know, reasonable to suggest. I don't know if it'll play out on the level like that level of granularity where, you know, um, companies are, are setting up their own blockchains. Um, you know, they might if it's a large company, it would be akin to like the intranet uh, as opposed to the Internet. But yeah, I, I mean, I the short answer to their question is, yes, you can. Um, I don't want to say it's easy to make your own blockchain, but all of, you know, if you look at Ethereum or, or existing blockchains, most of all of their code is open source. So you can fork that code, um, you know, and, and build on top of it or change it as you see fit. Um, an example of this, uh, a company that I met, I was on a panel with in the healthcare space, and they've forked the Ethereum blockchain to change some of it or update it so that it's HIPAA compliant, um, so that they can uh, you know, commercialize it as a, a network for sharing patient records. So that's an example of like, yeah, that's that's a, a blockchain um, based on an existing one, but slightly altered to fit a set of standards or requirements um, and achieve HIPAA compliance. Uh, it's, it's it's amazing when I when I think about. You know, again, just again, my world and how and so, you know, a lot of we have a lot of entrepreneurs and business people that are listening to this podcast. And I think how, you know, this technology, you know, everyone's and I'm going to talk to you in a second, really, about the crypto world. And I know it's not your total expertise, but um, I think about how this technology can just I, I mean, it is revolutionizing. But again, the people listening, like again, if you're listening right now, whatever it is you're doing, uh, really kind of take stock of what Samantha's talking about and maybe kind of close your eyes like I am right now and think about how this blockchain technology can can improve uh, upon your business. So in a second, again, Samantha, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna kind of ask you as much as I can about the cryptocurrency. All right. Well, today's show is brought to you in part by Coinbase, America's largest cryptocurrency trading platform. Folks, if you've been watching the news, if you've been reading the newspaper, if you're following me on Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, you've probably seen me talking about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and how it's changing the future. Wealth is being created at an astronomical rate. I've worked out a special arrangement with Coinbase where you can earn $10 in free Bitcoin just by texting coins, that's C-O-I-N-S, to five. 555-888. Again, it's coins to 555-888 and earn $10 worth of free Bitcoin. Folks, wealth is being created again at an astronomical rate. People are getting rich almost overnight by getting involved with cryptocurrency. Don't be left out. Earn your $10 in free Bitcoin by texting COINS, that's C-O-I-N-S, to 555-888. Hey, by the way, when you do it, we'll also get $10 in free Bitcoin. Again, text COINS, that's C-O-I-N-S, to 555-888. Folks, again, we've been on with Samantha Radakia. She's a Forbes under 40, uh, excuse me, Forbes 30 under 30. I was a 40 under 40. She's a 30 under 30 <laughs> <laughs> recipient. Soon to be 40 under 40. We'll see. She is, uh, I'm pushing it. <laughs> she's the CMO and co-founder of a company called Chronicled. Uh, it's a great company. They're doing a lot of great things in, in, the, in the, obviously in the blockchain world and the, just the, the, the technology space and how, you, you know, how it can really improve your business. So if you want some more information about Samantha, uh, and her business, you can actually just go to chronicle.com and or you can find more information about Samantha specifically at samantharadakia.com and, and it's spelled R-A-D-O-C-C-H-I-A.com. All right, so, you know, I'm like everybody else who's just trying to just really try and understand this whole crypto world and what's going on in there, uh, in this world. Now, you'd mentioned, you know, Ethereum. So I think everybody has kind of heard about Bitcoin, right, first. Uh, and then you have, you know, Ethereum, and then you have Litecoin, you have all these other, quote, altcoins. Um, you know, just what's, what is cryptocurrency? Can you just tell me what cryptocurrency is and, and, why, and why it's also disrupting this world? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, the cryptocurrency is the, I guess, the value of exchange for a particular blockchain. Um, so the Bitcoin blockchain has Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum network has Ether, um, you know, et cetera. All right, I think I, I think I think I get that now. But so, 
So Bitcoin is like this mysterious thing that was created by what you think might be a guy. It could be a group. Satoshi, is that his name? Not something. Satoshi, is that his name? Sat- right. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and, and so and it's it, you can't call Bitcoin. There's no Bitcoin offices. There's no customer service. It's just this this thing that was created and taken on its own life. But but a, but Ethereum is an actual company, right? It's an actual software company with with people behind it, right? No, I mean, it's, it's similar in the sense that it's a centralized network. So there is a, a group of, you know, core developers that worked, I, I would say, I think structurally, it's actually a foundation, okay. um, not a company right? Okay. Um, that, that put this together. So there's there are members who are part of the Ethereum Foundation and core developers who, who you know, built the uh, initial network as well as continue to contribute to it and update it. Um, but, you know, even the formation, so if you want to talk more broadly about the, the crypto world and how um, it's changing, not just, you know, or n- introducing new paradigms for not just the way that we interact as businesses, but how we, we organize businesses or even if it is a ba- business, it's, you know, maybe it's a foundation. And there's just so much excitement and enthusiasm um, to participate in building this underlying infrastructure and setting standards. Uh, so, you know, as a community, it's a really uh, giving, welcoming group of individuals. Yeah, I get excited on, on for my business and what we do. You know, so we, you know, we process, you know, millions of dollars a year and thousands of transactions, sometimes a day or week or month, or whatever. And, 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 you know, it's all credit card processing, right? So you get the credit cards, you get the banks, uh, and, 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 you know, they're kind of really controlling everything. And when I think about you know the the crypto world regardless of whether which one it is and how we can have this kind of one to one relationship with a with a with a consumer cutting out the bank and the credit card processor uh in between uh to me that's exciting for a whole host of reasons not necessarily the money saving things but it's it is really that underlying blockchain technology which is the trust factor right so I can have mm-hmm. a relationship with my customer and then look, you know, they pay me in Bitcoin and if I don't ship them product or provide the service, there's still all the levels of protection that anybody would normally have in the United States. Uh, but on top of that, you know, you still do have social media and what have you, right? I mean, I, 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 I'm excited about that because, because of how quick it can happen. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, it's 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 like to me, like, you know, I've 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 sent, you know, payments, you know, with my, you know, my phone or whatever of Bitcoin to to this one or that one. And it's seconds. I mean, and it's like it's and like across the world. I mean, that's I mean, to me, that's my. Yeah. Mind. Yeah. That is, that's a great perspective, a very enthusiastic perspective, because I don't know, I spend a lot of time, um, uh, you know, on Twitter and seeing people's complaints about the time that you know, transaction time it takes to send Bitcoin. And it, it really is, I mean, compared to, you're talking about like cross-border transactions, you know, your ability to send money from the United States to Spain or somewhere else. Yeah, it's, it's you know, infinitely better than existing solutions. Um, I think, you know, the community is getting a little antsy and spoiled as we're seeing more network congestion. You know, we're, we're crossing over into this new phase of um, early, early adopters, I wouldn't say, you know, mass adoption, but it were, it's, you know, going into like the public vernacular now. And so as people are um, wanting to transact more, they're complaining, oh, this is not fast enough, like peer to peer, but it's still infinitely better um, than some of the existing solutions for cross-border payments. You had mentioned the term, you know, early adapter. Um, so in, the, and we talked, you know, about the internet and how, you know, blockchain is is bigger than the bigger than the internet so so where are we in the in this world of blockchain cryptocurrency is it you know can you give me a comparison of like you know maybe an other industry like what you know are we in the beginnings are we in the middle or you know we're in the yeah the the way beginning so if we're thinking of like the internet as a parallel you know there was this time where um email was new and there was this period of browser wars where it was really like what are the companies that are going to kind of lead that adoption and it was still not something that you know the average person person used or like understood um, the protocols that were underlying um, the internet but then there were like these killer apps or use cases so email you know you can grasp onto that I can take 
it writes something digitally and send it to Australia and instantly it, it arrives into a uh, mailbox over there. So I, I think, you know, cryptocurrencies at that phase of like, we have our email, um, it's Bitcoin or the cryptocurrencies, um, but you know, the underlying technology, this networking technology or power of, of blockchain, it's, you know, it's, it's vast. So if you told someone in the nineties or were, you know, Hey, we can do email and you know, something like Facebook is going to be possible on top of that or or all of the companies or derivative companies that have formed um, on top of the underlying technology, they probably wouldn't have even been able to grasp it then. Right. Um, and, and I think we're at that phase. But that being said, I don't know, I was in an Uber this morning and um, my Uber driver was on the phone with his friend and talking about, oh, I just bought some Litecoin and, and what do you think? And they're talking about ripple and xrp and i was just you know laughing to myself but you know on one hand these people know i have no idea what they're talking about on the other hand you know it's encouraging to see these new you know newcomers coming into the community and again the crypto community is very welcoming so the first thing i did was give them my card and i said you know what like text me um i'll give you some not advice but educate you a little bit more more of like a mothering instinct of <laughs> protecting people like that, you know. Um, so on one hand, it's really great that it's starting to move um, because of the cryptocurrency use case. It's moving into this, you know, early adopter phase. But there's also a lack of education in um, both the crypto world, but like moving that, like how do we educate the public as to um, what it is or what the powers of it so, the, so that like they're aware and ready and can innovate with it as well. Right, right. Um, so that, that leads me into the question uh, that I have. So, you know, so you have, uh, you know, Bitcoin, which is the one that, you know, like you said, it's in the, you know, it's essentially in our vernacular now. It's, it's you know, something that, you know, your, your Uber driver does know about it and my mother knows about it. So everyone kind of has heard, you know, what Bitcoin is. And then they say everything else is considered an altcoin. And so that would be, you know, Ethereum, Litecoin, like you said, Ripple, Neo, all these other ones. So w tell us a little bit about um What's an altcoin? And this is the part where I think you said where you, that motherly instinct might start to kick in because uh, I know what an altcoin is. But tell us what an altcoin is and, and why they're good and why they, people should also be a little, a little wary of, of what's going on. I mean, I, I mean, altcoins can be representations of many things. So a lot of, you know, I read something today. It was like 40 of the top, like not many people realize that 40 of the top 100 altcoins are actually based on the Ethereum network. Right. So, you know, there's this notion of something called an ERC-20 token, um, which, again, is a way of, like, representing something um, or digital or on the Ethereum blockchain. And then these tokens um, have been used to uh, basically create this new paradigm of ICOs, um, initial coin offerings, where a company will um, basically release what they're calling their cryptocurrency or an altcoin and, you know, pre-selling it to the public. Now, what most of the public doesn't know is that all of this is built on top of the Ethereum blockchain. So essentially it's, you know, supporting um, the underlying infrastructure or community around Ethereum, which is the, the primary um, or Ether. It's like the primary coin there. So there's a relationship between you know, that's just an example, like a small subset of the altcoins. Um, some of them are entirely different blockchains and networks, and they represent like that ecosystem. Um, so, you know, you could look at uh, Zcash or Monero or some of, you know, these where there are slight tweaks to the underlying blockchain or network. So, you know, one um, Zcash is kind of founded under the pretense of privacy and um, anonymity. And so that's where, you know, at Chronicle, our company, we've um, utilized some aspects of that in having like this mission of an open network like Ethereum or Bitcoin, but also combining aspects of uh, privacy through zero knowledge proofs, which is a way that you can share data and basically trust that it's either, you know, right or wrong, but without revealing it to other parties. Uh, but like to go back to the conversation about altcoins, um, yeah, some of them are entirely different kind of currencies or stores of value based on a network with new 
value proposition. So if you think about it, if you want to invest in an altcoin, it's not, you know, a lot of people are looking at just, oh, the price is going up and down and, and speculating. And there's a great degree of speculation. But really, if you're thinking about making those investments, it's it's super valuable to look at the underlying network, um, you know, or blockchain. Because that's really the ecos. It's not just the price. That's just a representation of, you know, the, the ecosystems that this blockchain has the ability to build and what companies are using it to build infrastructure with it. Um, so while Bitcoin's price is really high, it's high because there's, you know, it's tied to a finite um, uh, supply. Right. And and that's what's happening there. But in terms of like companies are building on top of um blockchains are not building any products or, or services or infrastructure on top of the Bitcoin blockchain. You know, I'd say our the first blockchain that we built on top of for Chronicle was Ethereum. And we didn't and still haven't. We're agnostic to blockchain because we believe um, and I personally believe there will be numerous um, blockchains and permission ledgers, um, you know, that come about and evolve over the years. But, you know, in looking at it, um, when evaluating to, to make an investment, I wouldn't make any suggestions or speculate, but, you know, urge people to at least research the underlying ecosystem and community. Because um, that's really what, for the long run, is going to be tied to the value of the token or altcoin. Yeah, that make, it, make, it makes a lot of sense. I know I know uh, you're busy. You don't have a lot of time, but I just uh, want to spend a little bit more time. One of the questions, you know, that always comes up with, with me and I talk to people about it is, you know, you'd mentioned earlier that, you know, it's it's immutable. Uh, it's uh, it doesn't change uh, as far as the blockchain. And, and, and people say, well, what about hacking? You know, can't stuff get hacked? And my response is, well, uh, uh, you know, Bank of America is hacked every day. We just don't hear about it. But what, what's the deal with hacking and, and, and the safety of, you know, this this? Again, again, kind of tied to the <laughs> cryptocurrency world. I mean, what's up with hacking? I mean, can can my stuff get hacked? Can my stuff get stolen? I mean, we re, we're reading stuff all day long where you know bitcoins are stolen and this that. Tell us a little yeah. about, about that. Okay. I mean, the, it makes the, everybody nervous. The technology is is super secure, more secure than a conventional database or anything that our current systems are running on. But like, honestly, the greatest risk for hacking is just um, sheer stupidity. I don't know. Like, as I. I had a, I saw on social media a person post, you know, a picture of how much money they've made, and it was like a screenshot of their Coinbase account, right. with how much money in in Bitcoin, and I was just like, I had to say something, like this is not smart. Now you'll be a target. Um, and the way that people are hacking, it's very um, analog. It's not like you, I wouldn't worry about people like going into your your accounts and trying to do anything, it, it's not that hard. I mean, people are storing this value. I, there was like someone held up at gunpoint and people stole his phone or, you know, went in and stole the USB drive where um, the Bitcoin is stored. So it's more just like, you know, just traditional means of stealing and hacking that people should be worried about, um, not like the larger scale uh hacking right it's like I mean, when, it's like when kim kardashian posted a picture of her jewels and then all then you know two, yeah. days, la two days later she was robbed yeah i mean it's just basic kind of knowledge or, or security of knowing not to to share um how many assets you're holding or where you're holding it or or whatever i mean that's the first step to protect yourself if you're in, you know getting involved in investing and also just educating yourself um on a large scale yeah, you know, there are different ways that these larger networks can be compromised, um, but it would require large groups of people um, or companies coming together to kind of like stage that attack. So they've been designed to, to prevent that sort of um, hacking or, or compromising of the, um, the network. All right. Well, that makes me feel a little bit better. I, I, as, as, you, uh, as I'm talking to you, I'm looking at my, my Instagram account. I'm like, shit, did I post anything weird? Like, I, I don't, you know, I'm like, I know. <laughs> I'm, yeah. scroll, I'm scrolling through it. I've definitely, because I've been super, I see, see, one of the things, I, I've been super vocal about like cryptocurrency because, you know, I grew up poor with nothing and, and I have still a lot of friends that are still kind of, you know, you know still barely making it. And, and I think about like the world of cryptocurrency uh, and, you know, the ease in which the average everyday person can get in, right? So that's good and bad. But like you said, if you just spend a little bit of – this is why I'm so excited to have you on. If you just spend a little bit of time 
doing the research, you know, the average everyday person can get in, spend, put $100 in, and just kind of maybe play with it or learn a little bit about it. And they truly can get in at the beginning of the meeting. Like when you think about like IPOs or you think about, you know, the, the internet boom and, and, you know, when all these different companies had started, no one could really get in unless you already had the money or you already had a brokerage account. With, with cryptocurrency, mm-hmm. virtually anybody can get in, right? To me, that's really exciting for that, from, for that part of it. Yeah, I mean, it's democratizing a lot of things. So That's the word, democratizing. Know, just, yeah, democratizing, just not just like the sharing of information or data ownership with businesses. You know, we think of these big data monopolies like Google or Facebook or, or whatever, and that's been the business model for the internet. So, I mean, what's really exciting is that, you know, blockchain's ability to democratize data and data ownership. But beyond that also, yeah, very low barrier to entry. Like a lot of these... Um, the networks themselves or the ideas proposed have been also people, you know, just coming together, not coming from a lot of money or resources, um, but, you know, coming together around this mission and idea and working on it and, and building it. And you can see in the community the passion, at least right now, behind the technology, like half of the people who went to to building these technologies are millionaires or billionaires by now in the in the crypto world. And they're still working just as hard, if not more, on these projects to, to scale it even larger. So, you know, it's, it's blockchain's definitely here to stay, and it's really, really a great technology in, in its, like, disruptive or democratizing nature. Yeah, again, it's, it's for me, um, you, know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm somewhat agnostic about, about the documentary. It's really the only one that I saw, but it really kind of helped me just get a really a, a solid understanding of, you know this whole decentralization thing and how people you know were just, are you know in in you know 2008 when 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 the economy crashed and people were literally dying as a result of the market manipulation that was going on and i and it's it's exciting like you said that you know the democracy i can't even say that word i can't even say that word democracy we're going to say that <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, uh, and it's it's exciting for me bec- and again for the average everyday person to really kind of take control of themselves, take control of their own data, verify their own data. I mean, I just think it's awesome. And I, and I know I, I still I'm just like a neophyte when, when, when understanding this stuff. But, you know, I want to I want to thank you for coming on and, you know, and, and spending the time a little bit of time with us and, and educating us. Um, it's just it's really been awesome. Again, folks, we've been on with, with Samantha Rodakia. She's a, you know, recently uh, Huffington Post uh, said that she was one of the top blockchain thought leaders in the world. She's a Forbes 30 under 30 recipient. She's also the co-founder of a company called Chronicled. So if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business uh, person, if you're, you know, you're thinking about, you know, ways to, to modify your business, way to grow your business, way to verify what's going on in your business, you definitely want to check them out. Um, you can just go to chronicled.com. You can also find some information about Samantha at samantharadakia.com. It's R A D O C C H I A. Um, you can also find her company Chronicle. That's at Chronicled Inc uh, on Twitter. And Samantha, your uh, uh, your Twitter account is uh, s- at Sam Inster- uh, What is it's, it? I am Samsterdam, like the place. I um, am Samsterdam. Yeah. I need to change. I don't know. I don't I think I have the power to change my last name, but I need to make that a lot easier. I can understand why, like I said, because my real last name is hard to pronounce, hard to spell, and that's why I did it. Because no one could, you can't pronounce my la- my real last name. You can't spell it, and so I just went with all them because there's a whole those we can talk yeah, for hours. Yeah, I about have that. a whole side family that moved to LA, and they were musicians, and they went by the last name Richards because uh, you know, in back in the the 40s and 50s, Radakia wasn't cutting it. So <laughs> I don't know. I I like my last name, but it might need to change it, make it a little easier for people to find. No, you don't. I don't think you need to change it. But uh, <laughs> so again, thank you so much for coming on. I really, really appreciate it. My name is Michael Alden. This has been another edition of the Alden Report. Hey, by the way, before we end, listen. If you like this, okay. If you feel as though this information has been useful to you, please share it. Please like it. Please rate it. Do all that stuff that I guess I'm supposed to ask for. Uh, in the world of podcasting because I feel as though that this information is valuable and I, I hope that it is. As Again, please like it, share it, do all that stuff that we're supposed to do in this whole podcasting world. Again, my name is Michael Alden and we'll see you soon. Um, that was awesome. Thank you so much.
All right, so for all you business owners out there, you know how important capital is, especially working capital. I started my businesses with nothing and I never had working capital until I found Cabbage. You can borrow up to $150,000 from Cabbage. You can get approved in minutes and their payment terms are something that the average everyday business can understand. Folks, if you wanna borrow money, if you're looking for working capital, text Cabbage, that's K-A-B-B-A-G-E, to 555-888. Again, text Cabbage, K-A-B-B-A-G-E, to 555-888. Get approved in minutes. Get the working capital that you need. And oh, hey, by the way, if you end up going with them, they're also going to give you a $50 gift certificate. Again, text Cabbage, K-A-B-B-A-G-E, to 555-888.